hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to... No, I'm kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to... I, I'm i very bad at doing this, Amanda. I don't know if I should have been trusted. Uh, <laughs> Welcome hello. to the Oh, What a World yeah. podcast. Our little, our little bubble of the internet. This yeah. is strange. No, it's so weird to actually be starting this because we've been working on this for literally forever. Like, I feel like it's been three decades already. It's been a long time. It feels weird addressing everyone because, yeah. like, I don't know. Like, uh, it's strange. You guys aren't physically here. So it's like we're talking to, like, no one at the same time as talking to millions. Oh, not yet. Oh, maybe like, oh what? <laughs> oh, maybe, like, 30 people. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, like, 30 close friends and family. <laughs> is it is it a bad idea to name drop and be like, hi, so-and-so? Oh, I don't want to suggest it, but... Okay, just my mom. Hi, Mom. Oh. <laughs> when it, it's, it's happening. Hey. Oh, God. Okay. Well, wow, I think that we should... Yeah, I think we should first start off with introducing ourselves with names and everything. So, I'm Amanda. This is my co-host, Deontay. Hello. Um, and we're just a couple of college kids just wanting to talk about some creepy stuff yeah it's pretty basic um man should we go for like what we're doing in school too yeah i guess um i'm okay. currently in school for recording and production um and that's basically it i just want to be a sound designer which goes very well with this podcasting thing so i'm jealous <laughs> that's really <laughs> Okay. No, don't be. <laughs> wow. All right. So, um, I'm going to school for fine arts and animation. So, if in the event that the podcast does um, begin to like blow up, I'll I'll be managing the art and hopefully the merch too. I'm gonna make. Yeah. Amanda, we're gonna have some bomb merch. <laughs> Our merch is gonna be on fire. Well, you're getting a little ahead of yourself. <laughs> I'm just wanting but... to make sure. No, I understand. We have big, big plans for this thing, so please keep it updated with this. It's going to be very exciting in the future. We have a lot of episodes planned out already. But I'll be in charge of the editing, so hello, future Amanda, when you hear this back. Um, I hope you're having a great time editing this. <laughs> I bet future um, Amanda's like, this is a bull. Yeah, I'm about to be like, oh god, I'm cringing so <laughs> bad right now. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, um, how we plan to have this set up is for the first maybe 15-ish minutes, we'll talk about our days and our lives and whatever. And then after that point, we'll get into the real juicy stuff, as in scary stuff, not actual oh, juicy thing. <laughs> I have an idea. Yes. Okay. Okay. So since it's the Oh What a World podcast, how, what's going on in your world, Amanda? Oh, I am currently packing. Well, I'm basically packed for school. I Ooh. move in on the 15th of uh, August. Yes. and Oh, snap. Wow. It's going to be a very wonderful ride up to the mountains. <laughs> so, oh, man. Just that place is awesome. No, I love, I love my school so much. I just want to be back with the mountain breeze, but... Very soon. We still have the Khalid concert to get to. That's really yes. exciting. <laughs> yeah, we got... both got tickets to Khalid a few months back, and we're going together with a few friends. <laughs> That's going to be like an out-of-body experience. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't I... know what's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to happen. I better meet the love of my life. When I hear bluffing, we better make eye contact, and then credits roll. <laughs> I actually have like planned out like in my head getting called up on stage oh i'm so God. ready for this moment <laughs> i am so ready oh my goodness he about to be like hey, yo, <laughs> yes i'm probably gonna be like young dumb and broke <laughs> i'm gonna be struggling that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be crazy <laughs> okay um so what's going on in your world too oh that boy yeah, it's been interesting. I um so this is my first year living near school for college. I'm going to ECU, so hooray. Um 
it's gonna be really it's been really weird and it's gonna be really weird getting used to it but um had a really bad experience looking for apartments uh kind of yeah, almost right yeah it was pretty crazy almost got an apartment in the worst part of the area my college is in without knowing so yeah. um luckily <laughs> yeah luckily today I got the news that there is a spot open for um, on-campus living. So I'm going to be up in the school. I'm hey. so excited. Campus <laughs> is crazy. They had a Pac-Man like arcade machine. Oh my goodness. Oh no, you have got to be bopping up in there. And I'm very oh. excited to hear all the crazy stories that you will bring to us <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about your gonna college be, experience. I'm going to be eating so much. Oh my gosh. Yeah, now you have a on-campus meal plan instead of the off one. So oh. that'll be, it'll treat you good. <laughs> Freshman 15 so. is real, I promise you. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like I could go to gain a few pounds. Yeah. Kind of um, If anybody doesn't know Deontay, he's literally like the tallest and smallest person I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you are going to enjoy the story that I'm gonna tell you today because it kind of relates. You're oh, you're about to no. be like, oh my god, he's oh, this thing. God. Oh no. I kind of went in on these notes. I oh hope, my goodness. I like hope ready for for anyone who knows, I'm the least happiest person when I hear scary stories. I am not a scary story person. I really don't delve into them, especially because it is eleven o'clock at night, um, and. My bedtime is soon. The <laughs> same, yes. <laughs> so we're about to talk about all these scary things. And then I'm about to be laying up in my bed. And then I'm going to sit here and think about all the things that we talked about today. And it's not going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to lay in my bed and like look over at like three o'clock in the morning at a pile of clothes in my corner and be like, is that what I think it is? <laughs> yeah, me no, all the time. definitely. You know, that's going to be me. Oh my goodness. Okay. Are you ready to jump in, Amanda? I guess so. I don't know if I told you what the topic is, but... I, I might have heard just a little bit, but I, I tried to block it out, so I am okay. all ears. I decided to go with something like... We needed a... Ha this is our first episode ever, so I wanted a heavy hitter. We're talking about skinwalkers today. Do you oh know what that is? Oh my god. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> Oh, okay. no. Okay, it's about to go down. I'm gonna, okay. okay, I'm gonna, like, I tried to format it a little bit. I've got a little bit of lore. I've got some of, like, some of the ways that they're created. And then I've got, like, how to kill it towards the end. So that way we can end with, like, something, you know, like, if you see one after this, like, you can kill it. Like, it's okay. As if I'm going to kill anything. I literally <laughs> cry if I see the fly. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, okay. I'm gonna start getting into this. Let's do this. Okay. The Skinwalkers are, um, they come from the Navajo tribe, and that is a tribe that's in Southwest, uh, it's a Southwest American tribe, and they, they are very, very sensitive when it comes to, like, nature, and so a lot of their legends focus around, like, animals. And so Skinwalkers is that same thing, but it's, like, taken to the highest extreme possible. I'm going to try to pronounce how to say it in their language. So Navajo is pronounced Yina Golish. Yina Golish? I probably just butchered that. It's Okanes. okay. <laughs> and so th this is where things started getting creepy. It translates to he who walks on all fours. Oh, no. Yes. Okay, okay. Here we go. Mm. So according to the legend... A skinwalker starts off as a regular priest with a Navajo village, and the priest has to reach his highest potential, his highest level of mastery in, I guess it's like priesthood? I don't know. What do what do priests, like, what do they do? Um, I mean, I know they, like, like, bless people. They have, to, they have to go through levels of, like, through their ministry, probably, and um, to get the most holy, to, to the, get the most closest to God, to speak to the people, usually. That's really cool. Okay, that's awesome. So, like, I feel like a priest... If I was the highest little priest, I'd be like... My baptisms would be crazy. <laughs> I would be, like... I'd be doing, like, layups in the oh baptism God. water. You can't I'd be, be like, my, not my baby! Oh, my goodness. I'd be like, swish. Okay, wait. Oh. Alright, let me get back on track. Okay. So... So, think of, like... Think of, like, 
a priest at his absolute highest, highest level. He's like the nicest, like the, the purest soul. We're going to go and look at the opposite of that. So it's like a priest that uses his like good energy for evil. And so he uses everything that would work for him in like a really bad way. So it's, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Um, in order for the priest to be turned into this thing, you have to you have to do this thing. You have to like commit a great evil, is what it says. And I guess that's considered like something that's like so bad that even like the world around you knows, like, oh my god, he just like did that. Murdering babies. Yes, like murdering <laughs> babies. Um. <laughs> so yeah, like killing a parent or like a family member that's like really close. It's kind of weird. It's like, that's like your first step into this. Mm -hmm. And actually, I guess that's kind of like all the steps. You kind of, I mean, you know, that's that's kind of kind of a lot. Like, dang. Can you yeah. imagine like, oh my goodness. I mean, that's, it's kind of sad, but it happens a lot in other ministries too. Like, even now today, like we hear all the time about like what Catholic church does all the time. So it's not, I can't, I can see it happening. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty insane. Um, so yeah, but this, okay, so this is like, this is the beginning. It gets more messed up from here. I hate to break it to you. Uh. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is seen as a moment that breaks your humanity. So, you know, it's a great evil. And once you become bad enough to do something like this, a part of your humanity is already gone. And so it starts to get stripped away as time progresses. And so like the person is no longer a person anymore technically because once you lose your humanity then you know you start to like become what you truly are. And so when the priest commits this great evil, he starts to morph and it gets slender and it gets smaller. Mm -hmm. Oh and no. And so what that means is that he eventually becomes like this like 6 to like 7 foot tall super skinny superhuman strength beast like I, I don't know how to really have you ever seen until dawn yeah that game it's like it looks like a wendigo that's oh, almost exactly my what they look like take a wendigo and give it some crazy supernatural powers and that's the basis of what of what a skinwalker is um it freaking sucks is what it is it it's you'll see you'll see okay okay so they get superhuman strength and um, the person loses their humanity. And so a lot of uh, skinwalkers are considered to be like witches because, you know, I guess witches get a bad rep. I, I you know, I'm they turn into these the witches. things. Yeah, you know, witches, if you're out there, you're kind of cool. But also, please, you know, don't like. Yeah, don't please. become no skinwalker or anything. I'm, I just want y'all to do your little happy potions or whatever. Like, I'm trying to be like Hocus Pocus. <laughs> Yes, Halloween town. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, so once the priest becomes this skinwalker, their objectives completely change. As a priest, you're like you're there to help people and to spread like joy and like purity. But as a skinwalker, your entire life revolves around causing as much pain and suffering as you possibly can. And so that is their sole objective like they just want to kill and destroy everything around them and so that's the part where your humanity slips away because you become yeah. this <laughs> insane you become this like you, you live to cause pain and that is that is nuts it is crazy yeah it's like um, their sole desire or something yes it is that's like it's kind of like an animal's instinct but instead of the animal having an instinct that keeps it alive it's just killing for no reason all the time just because it can um, it kind of reminds me of like succubus yes yes that's actually yeah oh that actually kind of relates to something that's uh farther down in my notes oh no Chelsea. oh we get into the good good <laughs> <laughs> it's about to get wild okay okay so they can transform into things the reason it's called a skinwalker is because it can walk in the skin of other things around it. So if you were to go into the woods, it would you wouldn't see it normally. You wouldn't walk into the woods and look and see, oh my god, there's a skinwalker over there, because they camouflage themselves as animals. Um, I've got a list here. So they can turn into coyotes, wolves, owls, foxes, eagles, a crow, 
and even a freaking crow. people. They can turn into freaking people. So, you know, if like Joe asks you to go on a fishing trip and then oh, you look Joe. at Joe, you're like, Joe, your eyes looking a little weird, buddy. What's <laughs> going on? And then Joe starts going like, Ooh, that's how you know. He's a <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what they sound like. Oh, goodness. Okay, okay. All right, all right. So this is the crazy part. Mm -hmm. So they're like, they're like magic. I mean, since they're supposedly like witches or like priests, they're like, they've got magic going on. So they're kind of cool, but it's also horrifying because like when they turn into these animals, they're like deformed versions of the animal because like they, they can take the skin of the animal, but not the like, they can't take the uncanny valley. Like, is that what we're it's like that weird mix where something looks very human-like, but it's like not at all. Like you can tell it's fake. Yes, yes. Okay, so essentially think of it as a man standing on all fours with dog skin and like wolf skin like sewn in around him, imitating mm-hmm. a dog. And so like when he moves, you can see him shifting underneath the skin. Oh but you my can't... god. Yes. So like he really wears the skin? Yes. It's crazy. Um oh, it's my. pretty bad. It's 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 not as horrible as it sounds. You'd think that if you saw something like that, you'd immediately be able to say, Oh, I that that thing's wearing some skin. What is that? But <laughs> they make it's it's convincing enough to get you from afar, but when you get close up to it, that's when it's like too late. That's when Oh no. So what it does is it'll turn into these things to get close to you and it'll stalk you essentially. It'll try and like, it'll try and kill you. And, oh, sorry, that leads me to my next point. It has the ability to take over your body. So one of the things you're never supposed to do is lock eyes with this thing. If you do- Not like an Enderman? (laughs) Kind of like, yeah, kind of like an, exactly like an Enderman. Um, But this Enderman can put itself into your body and take your skin so if you stare into its eyes for too long it can become you i don't i don't it didn't really specify if that means that you die or if it just takes your skin and then continues on i don't know at that point where it's staring me dead in the eyes i think that i would have (laughs) died i I I think that that would have been my last breath and he would just live as me forever It'd probably pull like an Avril Lavigne, you know, because she's not, she's dead. Like, rest in peace, Avril Lavigne. Like, that peace. girl that's playing her, I don't know who that is, but oh, <laughs> like, she might be a skinwalker, but I don't know. That's crazy. Wait, what? How do I know? How do we know that we're not skinwalkers right now? Well, I don't feel like one, but I feel like <laughs> I feel like if I was one, I'd just be right standing out right side your window or something. Duh, ew, if anyone like, didn't know, yeah. we're not in the same room. Um, that would be crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you're a few streets over. Yeah, no, I'd just be standing outside your window. If I looked at my window and saw you standing in my yard with a laptop and a microphone, <laughs> I'd be like, dang, my internet good or whatever. I'd be like, yo, that sound. No latency. That would be nuts. Um, I'm very thankful that I'm pretty certain that you're not a skinwalker. I don't think they're capable of speaking. They kind of, they're kind of weird. Like, oh, wait, oh, it falls in that like uncanny valley, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. It is weird. They look human, kinda. They. Oh, actually, if you want to see what a skinwalker looks like, there is a video on YouTube of. A reported case of a skinwalker showing up. Oh no, no, no. It's it's, it's pretty bad. No. Um you'll know you found the right video when it looks like there's a man walking backwards, like the crab walk from our, our like old school days. He's <laughs> it looks as if a man is doing the crab walk in the woods. I like, feel like there's a man behind me doing a crab walk right now and I I can't Oh I turned around, I had to. Oh boy. Um Anybody but yes, if, it, me, it's okay. if you want to check out and look up what a skinwalker looks like, it essentially looks like a naked man. Just a completely <laughs> no hair, no facial hair, no head hair. But oh, there's something. No. The person's limbs are stretched. Their arms are twice as long as yours. Their legs twice as long. So they look like the Wendigos from Until Dawn. That's almost exactly what they look like. But they can take the form of other things instead of just wanting to eat your face. They also want to eat your face, I think. 
they, I don't know. They never specified if they were cannibals. Maybe they are. They want to kill you. That's for sure. Um, okay. Well, I don't okay, want to die. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, so there are a lot of people, the Navajo people, they're, they're smart. They understand that talking about this kind of thing brings negative energy. And since this thing feeds off of it, if you were to speak to someone that's from the, the Navajo tribe, if you were to bring this up to them, they would shut it down immediately. They do not. It's kind of like, I'm not going to say her name because there's a mirror to my right, but uh, that lady. Uh, with oh, the first no, don't even. You don't even you, you don't even got to say her. We don't uh, talk just, about her. We don't think about her. We, oh, yep, my gosh. Yep, that is it's, it's exactly like that that uh them that hides in the mirror um it's pretty bad to talk about it it's pretty bad because once you do so what are we future... doing right now <laughs> yeah, I don't think... hold on wait yeah. okay 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 so they they have perimeters they they have areas that they like to roam they are not in like more urban areas so they're not gonna be in like the suburbs They'll you be know, like I'll, we'll pull out the Glock on them real quick I don't even I don't, they don't even know how we play up in these yeah. streets <laughs> so they like to they have to stay in in the woods because Bro. it's very hard to there's not many animals where we live there yeah, are okay. animals uh oh have you ever seen my backyard i will admit your your backyard has a lot of woods okay <laughs> let me phrase that it has to be there has to be a lot of wildlife for them to mimic in order okay. for them to okay to in order for them to continue to hide because they don't like the sun, apparently. And also, if if they were to, like, come out of their little illusion, then you'd be very concerned. It'd be very easy to see them. Their skin is, like, okay. super pale. They have super long arms. They're not, they're, they're really fast. But if you saw, like, a seven to eight foot tall man running in the woods. I'd at, be like, very concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure. They they run, they're, they're crazy. Since they have super strength, they kind of just fly they run like deer but picture a man running like a deer on all four or a dog on all fours through the woods just like really fast <laughs> it's crazy i mean why am i laughing more than i am yeah, afraid I like i can just imagine oh, him just galloping it's crazy um so another thing that they have is their features their features are really disturbing their skin Oh, it's pretty bad. It it becomes very, very tight, like to the bone where you can see their like anatomy, which also kind of makes it more disturbing when they move because um, a lot of accounts say that it doesn't look human the way that they move because I, I suppose, you know, because they're not human. So your arm would bend forwards and that's just kind of the way your arm bends. You can move yeah. it to the side. Their joints seem to work differently because of the forms that they take. So if it turns into a dog, the reason it looks weird as a dog is because its body is being morphed into that and it's being yeah. put into a mold. And so when you see it run, you see its joints and stuff popping all out of place in places that it shouldn't be Ew. doing. And so it's it's odd. It doesn't work. Okay, okay. I'm going to keep moving on. Um, so don't talk about it to any Navajo Um, I don't even know, y'all. I'm sorry to the Navajo listeners that just popped up on this thing and they saw it they thought it was cool or whatever and then we started talking about them and they had to click off like just come back to the next episode i promise you we will not talk about these ever again they are so mad i i did not realize <laughs> what i had just done oh no it's not okay both, sorry. i love you so much we love you so their big thing is wearing animal skin and whenever they're in their human form it's it's basically like a, a poncho that they wear, but it's different animal skin. And within like the Navajo culture, it's seen as kind of taboo to wear skin of any other type of animal. It's just a little different. It's as if like, if I were to go to the mall in like full snake skin, just like, just cut a snake oh, open, the world? <laughs> just put the snake skin on, like a full jacket made of just snake, dead snake. And just oh walked my gosh. in there, everybody would I don't be like, like what? Yeah, no, I, I don't even like, like, fur or, like, snake skin or alligator skin or whatever type patterns or stuff. I think it's so, like, so weird. <laughs> it's pretty odd. Um, so, so as, you, as you can see, it's it's strange for us, too. We don't really wear much skin. And when you do wear skin, you're always, you're looked at as, oh, whoa, that's kind of risky. Wow, that's crazy. Where'd that yeah. skin come from? Yeah. So, yeah, the Navajo people are very respectful of nature. 
as uh, most Native American tribes are. They mm-hmm. like to be nice and skinning things for no reason. It just kind of it just kind of goes against their code. So mm-hmm. they only really use sheepskin and buckskin. And the only reasons they do that is because of ceremonies. When there's something that's big that's happening, they wear it as a celebratory thing or as a sacred thing. It's never worn as a, like a symbol for wealth or anything. Yeah, or it's okay. never wore, they never wear it to conceal themselves because they are already great at that. They've got other means of camouflage that doesn't disrespect nature because, oh, you know, they're not... You. They're not jerks. Yeah. They're pretty great. Um, So this is why the Skinwalker is seen as such a... They're kind of dicks, if I'm being honest. They no, just... They prob- they, yeah, they sound and like... And so yeah, it's kind of messed up. That's also, it adds to the legend. They're messed up because they don't care. They will skin whatever they want. They sound like... Parents. They sound like in that culture that they're literally chaos themselves. Yes. Like they are the bringer of chaos. Yes. Yes. Um, oh man. Okay. We're about to get into their motives. Are you ready for this? Yeah. It's freaking what do weird. They do what they do. They do a lot of things that are very sketchy. Um, obviously, a seven a seven foot, eight foot tall Michael Jordan with no hair running through the woods is gonna do some sketchy stuff. But these guys take it to a different extreme. They will stalk you. And when I mean stalk you, I don't mean they'll be in your bushes. Uh, well, they probably will. Um, so normally when you think someone's stalking, they follow you around all day. They just watch you from afar. Mm-hmm. But the skinwalkers take it to a different level. You'll walk outside. You'll be like, oh, what a beautiful day. Look at the birds. And you'll look down and see a cat across the street. And you'll lock eyes with the cat. And the cat won't break eye contact. And he'll stare at the cat and look at it for a second and think, man, that cat really does not like me right now. And then you'll see the cat move and you'll notice that one of its legs is the wrong way. Oh, and the cat no. will run off. And you won't see <laughs> it again. Is, why'd you have to say cats? I'm sorry. Because we got cats in our neighborhood. We do. It's, it's subtle things. The one thing that is always prominent across the board is their eyes. So at night, whenever you shine light on animals' eyes, you know, it does that reflecting thing. They turn into, like, circles in the darkness. Like, a really shiny, like, weird-looking reflective yeah. disc. So, skinwalkers are known for having, I believe, wait, oh, let me double check. It was red eyes? Their eyes vary, though. It goes from different colors, depending on the form it's in. Um, <laughs> I believe I might have that wrong. I'm that sorry. Remind not me. No, it reminds me of those girls that are like... My eye colors change depending on my mood. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> the skinwalker is just like, my eye color changes when I'm trying to kill. <laughs> Yikes. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's essentially the same thing. Um, people have stated that they have very piercing red eyes or very piercing yellow eyes, um, depending on what you see. There is, in fact, a YouTube video I don't 100% know the name of it, but there is the there were these two guys that were in the woods hunting, and while they were there, they had a night vision camera, and they were looking into the trees because they heard some sound, and they saw a man hunched over in the trees, and so they zoomed in on him, wondering what he was doing up there at such a late time, and as they got close, he turned around and looked at them, and they ran. I'm, I don't know what happened after that, but I can only assume... It was pretty bad. It, he didn't look great. He looked like a skinwalker. He looked I... like, like a naked man in a tree. It, this it, is it, why it, I don't right. do those type of things at night or in the woods. Like, if we're going hiking, we're going to go on a very traveled path. If we're going <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to just, like, check out nature, we're not going past 8 o'clock. Um, <laughs> yes. See, I would never find myself in situations like this because I'm a very... I'm very much a city girl, so. I totally know what you mean. Yeah, I don't, the woods kind of freak me out. They're, they're scary. There's a lot of things in there that can kill you. Yeah, I'm not about that life. Like, we, we've evolved. I don't need to do that anymore. Like, I'm so grateful for my ancestors for doing all that. Like, evolving, like, figuring out fire, um, electricity. Like, thank (laughs) y'all. Yeah, I'm just glad. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, I was going to say I'm glad that I didn't have to be the one to discover those things because I would be pissed. I'd be like, you know, I did all this work. selection would take me so quickly. Like, I don't know what I would do. Like, I'd just be sitting there. I am very soft. I moisturize my hands and my lips occasionally. <laughs> I would not survive. Outside, it's always the outdoors or prison. I would not survive either of those. Those are good things sure. that you don't have to worry about if you keep oh. keep your life on track. <laughs> oh boy. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to continue with these guys. So they will stalk you. And the really messed up part is that not only can they imitate your skin and the skin of things around them, they can also imitate sounds perfectly. So a lot of real life accounts will have skinwalkers that will try and get into someone's house. And so what they'll do is they'll turn into something People have known, people have uh, said things like they'll see animals, like strange looking animals, trying to get into their windows or their door, or they'll be in their house and they'll look out their window and there'll just be a dog sitting there staring at them through their window. And you'd think that you'd, you'd be like, okay, oh wow, it's kind of creepy, a dog's there, but the dog won't move. It doesn't, they, so the one thing that they can't get down is behavior. They can't act uh... like the animals. That's how you can tell so the animal will act really weird and it will just not stop staring at you no matter where you are. You'll also feel, you'll feel it staring at you. That's one another thing. It's the the pressure of their eyes, I, I suppose it is. They have some kind of some kind of power when it comes to their stare. It it like it bores into you. You can feel it and you can I feel know them staring I can at you. I feel it and I know it would make me cry immediately. <laughs> oh goodness. It's um it's pretty it's it's pretty bad. It's, uh, apparently you can feel it. Like, you know, your senses, like, go crazy. Um, and so what they'll do is if you go into your house, they know you're safe in there and they can't just break in. They're not full-blown beasts. They work yeah. in stealth. And so if their stealth is, if their, like, facade is broken, if you see their true form, then it kind of defeats their the purpose of all their abilities. And so what they'll do is sometimes... And in some cases, they even imitate the people that you know. So, for example, you'll be sitting in your house, and you hear a knock at the door, and you think, oh, a stranger's here, I'm probably not going to answer that. But then you hear the voice of your mother, and you saw her up a little mama. bit. mama. And so you're like, oh, your mom's like, hey, can you let me in? And you're like, oh, okay, sure. And you get to the door, you go to open the door, and then you realize, wait a minute, why doesn't she have her key? And then you begin to question her, you say, Mom, why why aren't you able to get in? Don't you have your key? And she doesn't respond. Mama. And then your mother calls you from the <laughs> other room. And you begin to freak out. Because and then I what shut was that outside. Door. Then exactly. I shut that door. Yes. So they'll do whatever they can to get you. That's that's the thing. They're, they want to get you. If, they, if you see an animal and you don't pay it any attention, they got you. They're gonna lure you in a in a spot to where they can get you. Or oh, if you hear no. something outside of your house and you see a weird looking animal out there, they'll get you. It's it's the things that you don't pay attention to. They they do the little things to get you in a position where they can kill you. Oh my goodness! And I'm so oblivious that I wouldn't notice at all. That is that's exactly it. People go on autopilot. So if you see a dog walking outside and it's hungry, oh, your, your automatic response is gonna be like, oh, poor little dog. Oh. Unless you hate dogs, then dang, I mean. Dang, who Hates dogs like y'all really out know. there hating dogs. That's, a big <laughs> like, problem That's pretty crazy. Yeah, maybe okay. they maybe they should get you. Like I don't know what maybe dogs ever should. did to you. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if I were to see a skinwalker dog, I would never trust a dog again. I don't know. Maybe. But I love maybe. dogs so much. I really like dogs a lot. Okay, yeah. Maybe a skinwalker dog gets a pass once. Maybe, yeah, no, maybe if it ate me. While I was like just sitting there, if it was in its dog form, even if it looked a little deformed, I'd probably still be like, "All right, that's fine." <laughs> Maybe they just want to be loved as animals. Maybe that's just how they feel comfortable. Yeah, maybe we're the bad guys. Maybe we are the bad guys. Oh wow. Oh okay. So yes, they can Im they can imitate voices. They'll imitate. Um, it's said that they can read your thoughts. Um, I'm not sure how true that is. They're not like. They're not super, I mean, they kind of are superhuman, but also they were once human and they they don't have telepathy. They just kind of, they're just kind of demon things. 
So, people say they Just can read your mind. Just normal things, you know? But, <laughs> yeah. The, so the thing is, they'll watch you for a while. They'll watch mm-hmm. you for a long time. And then oh, they'll begin, no. that's how they'll get the basis. That's how, they'll, that's how they know who you'll respond to. They'll check you out for a little bit. They'll watch from across the street. And you wouldn't know because you see a cat and you're like, oh, that cat's just chilling. He's just chilling, big chilling. Um, but no, it's it's actually a skin demon thing that's coming to use your mother's voice to get in your house. Don't Funny do that, that to my mama. <laughs> oh, it that would suck. Leave my mama alone. <laughs> okay. So um, skinwalkers can do this thing. The, the way that they know where you are is they have a bunch of different tools. One of their favorites is um, they have this sort of think a blow dart but instead of shooting darts you shoot bones and the bones are shot so fast that they could pierce through your skin without you realizing it they got very that? tiny yes apparently they got that i don't know where they Dang, um, i don't they got, know what kind they of they don't put it in the inventory <laughs> it did they got they have the heat apparently yeah they do oh my goodness um don't worry, and so I got the heat too Oh snap! You always carry, as you say, you always that that thing on you. Yeah, I got my thing on me. (laughs) I'm gonna need to carry that thing whenever I go. Oh no, probably not. I can't say that when I'm going to ECU. Oh god, they're gonna be like, he's got a thing. He got that thing. (laughs) Shoot him! Oh jeez. Okay. Um. So, yeah, they'll shoot this thing into you, and it's a little tiny bone fragment. But for some reason, that is how they're able to track you. Uh, they got so tracking they, devices. They have tracking devices, and they'll shoot it into you, and that's how they'll be able to find you. And at that point, mm-hmm. you're marked as a victim, and I that's when they that become relentless. So there are certain types of healers in the Navajo, not not lore, but just the Navajo tribes themselves. They have healers, and they're mm-hmm. called medicine men, I believe it is. Um, think <laughs> of it as a pharmacist, but he doesn't operate with pills and a store. He just and is his own. Theory. Yeah, exactly. He does his own little herbs. He's got his spices. He's got certain ways of healing you. And so that's exactly what they use. Medicine men are really handy, and they're the only way for you to heal from that. And they're on- the only way for you to fully get rid of the uh, the skinwalker because they'll mark you. And once you get marked, a whole bunch of negative stuff starts happening to you. You have a bunch of bad luck. It's just really bad. Oh, and no. so they can sense it and they can get rid of it. They can see it on you. Um, another thing that the skinwalkers use, they use poison powder. This is where things get freaking wild. I mean, things are pretty wild right now. But listen, okay, listen to this. You're going to want to freaking hear this. Okay. So they use this poison powder. And if they get close enough to you, they'll like <laughs> blow it in your face kind of like some flour <laughs> i guess <laughs> I mean, people do that anymore they'll just be like and then boom you're poisoned before you realize what happens apparently apparently the point i don't know what they make this poison out of but apparently it can result in freaking heart failure okay they can stop your heart by just shooting some baby powder in your face not baby powder it's crazy oh, is it crack? i don't know it might be crack and that's how they <laughs> What if the heart failure is due to addiction? Dang. You done maybe, addicted that fast. Maybe the skinwalkers are just really bad addict. They're just crackheads. What if that's the case <laughs> this whole time? They're just crackheads. Shout out to all the Nav- crackheads. Hey! Oh, goodness. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe one of the Navajo men just kind of, he's like, what is- I'm not going to imitate them. Oh, no, that would be mad disrespectful. I love you, Navajo people, please. I'm just trying to tell this story. So maybe they're crackheads. Um, but the way to kill these supposed crackheads, so if you want to be really, really blunt about it, you can, a lot of people just tend to shoot at things, and that works sometimes, but you have to keep in mind, these things are insanely fast, and they have some sort of black magic going on, so you can't just shoot it, that's the sucky part, um, and well, you kind of can, but also not at the same time, so if one shows up in your house, and you just shoot it with your Glock, Nothing Dang, will happen. Not the clock. Apparently, I used a clock. <laughs> so yeah, apparently they have some kind of effect around them that prevents just regular physical objects from hitting them. It's strange. They never really explain it, but it, supposedly if you shoot them point blank, it won't hurt them. I don't know if they've got like super thick skin or like what's going on there, but 
it's weird. It's really weird. I guess. Yeah, that maybe, sounds really weird. They're just kind of thick. <laughs> they um, thick. <laughs> so, <Really> thick. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I don't even know what I'd do if I saw a thick, a thick skinwalker. I'd be like, what? <laughs> well, maybe he's he gonna have to turn that around for me. <laughs> Hang. Oh, oh snap! Oh snap! What them bones could do? <laughs> oh my God! Ew, no. <laughs> Ew, he's got crazy joints, too, so you know he'd be popping it like... Oh, he be... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so... Okay, so in order to actually harm one of these guys, you have to dip your bullets in this type of white ash. They never specified what that is. I assume in one of the stories that I was reading, this woman grabbed some white ash from her fireplace because you know like the fire burns there's certain portions that are, are like light like white kind of gray she took some of that and coated a bullet in it and she shot at it and supposedly that has some effect um also i don't remember what it is there's something there's something else to where if you say its full name it dies but if you say the full name of whatever skinwalker you're seeing it will get sick and die within a few days so that's another way to kill it. If you if you can learn its name somehow and say it to it, then it'll die, which is kind of strange. Um, I don't I can't remember what it is. There's something else. There's something else that if you say the name of it, like the full full name, it'll die. I can't remember. It's so. I think it might be in Harry Potter. I think I might be wrong though. Maybe. Okay, everybody, I'm so sorry. My microphone decided to glitch out. Um, if you heard anything that was really weird during this recording, it was probably because of my microphone. Um, our setup isn't the best at the current moment, and we're doing a very good job at, at, with what we have. So <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to um, roll with the punches and excuse our hiccups, and I'll try to edit everything in post but um continue your story you were talking about um the bullets i think yeah okay yes okay um so yeah you um you have to coat the bullets in white ash and i assume that could be from anywhere but um yeah no they never really specified i'm not really sure where i'm gonna get some white ash uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i don't do, i guess we burn and stuff um, i guess so <laughs> I mean, if I, like, wake up early in the morning and don't put any lotion on, there's some white ash if you oh, want some. Oh, that's you just, <laughs> just rub yourself a little bit. Just kick the kick the skinwalker with my knee... Oh, kick the skinwalker with my kneecap? Oh, yeah. God, maybe I am one of these things. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so you can shoot it with the white ash on the bullets. It kind of works the same as werewolves. Almost the exact same as werewolves with silver bullets. I don't know yeah. what it is about bullets having some kind of weird i don't know it's it's strange thinking that the, a certain material is linked to killing this thing but i mean you uh, you never know sometimes that's just the I way i guess we be. burn it all the only thing that i can think of that produces white ash would be like either a volcano um or <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> i like how my first thought was a volcano a volcano okay. or like burning paper yeah wow i actually did not think about that then again if somebody if somebody came at me with like a brigitte from overwatch bullet i would for sure die as well because i can't stand <laughs> i would be murdered yeah. immediately i love teen men oh, <laughs> <That's geez. she's... laughs> that would be the final words that i hear before my departure okay. so um yes so you can kill them with bullets technically you just kind of have to get some of that white get ashy bullets um yes. and then if you say its name i'm not sure how you'd find out what its name is Dang, but that say like it's some, full some, name. isn't it the ring that sounds like that's the what ring, i was thinking though. i have no idea there's something there's something to where if you say its full name it dies i can't remember what it is wait 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 Oh my god, I think I remember. It's, it's, oh, 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 I remember. Oh, okay, he's getting okay. excited. <laughs> it's the nun. It's, isn't it? Oh, no, wait. wait isn't what? it the nun? They From just the spit, conjuring? no. They spit the actual love, blood of Jesus on that thing. Oh, dang. There was something in the conjuring. Wait, wait. Okay, okay, hold on. So, not the conjuring. 
what the second movie is. I guess is the Conjuring two. Two, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember they were fighting it and the the Lorraine had to wait? Yeah, Lorraine had to read the name of it out loud to banish it that, i think that's what i'm thinking of she had to say its name and then isn't that, that name isn't lorraine from the the um what movie is that is it annabelle no it's a different franchise um oh Freaking, man um oh i know this one is it's it first... insidious insidious i thought lorraine's yes. from insidious yes so yeah they're in both they're what? Since they had, yeah, since they had so many crazy adventures, they're in The Conjuring and Insidious as well. What? Yeah, it's, Dang, it's I weird. didn't even know that. It's crazy. Unless I'm wrong. I'm fairly certain that... We might be wrong, y'all. Um, we might be wrong. If you're, well, on, if you're on YouTube or anything, just leave in the comments uh, <laughs> that we're wrong. <laughs> we just lost every viewer we had. My mom is gone. Dang, she She's said, like, you hey, come for this. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, okay. I think we almost got it. We were doing a pretty good job. We almost had that spot on. I just don't know for sure. But there is something out there. There's something that you if know, you say the full name of it, it, it yeah. died. I'm just going to say the full name of absolutely everything that I encounter from this point forward. I, I wish that worked with, like, flies. You know? That'd be handy. A fly flies into your Line room. number 32. <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, Bartholomew! And then the fly Bartholomew just drops dead. The and you're just like, yes, I knew it! <laughs> Bartholomew the fly. That would be so funny. <laughs> okay, okay, so... <laughs> um, so that pretty much sums up Skinwalkers. I do have something very quick that I want to share at the end. So, during the research of this, I was looking at real-life stories. Because this is kind of... Think Slenderman. This was their... This is their real life version of Slenderman. This is probably there, something he's based off of, probably. Yeah, there are a lot of people nowadays that are like, well, not nowadays, maybe around the, I'd say maybe, maybe 2012, 2013, where urban legends were huge. Yeah. And like creepypasta was creepypasta, thriving. Ah, yeah. uh, I remember there were tons of people that were. Those were the days. I was terrified of Jeff the Killer. Oh, Terrible. I was too. And you could tell, you could easily tell that was Photoshop. Like, I was you so can, dumb. Yes. It, I, I don't know why. I used to think, Jeff's going to kill me. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah. I would sit in my room and be like, been drowned. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. So, hold on. There's another thing. Um, This is very similar to one of the stories that existed back then. It was called The Rake. Um, it, Like... When I mean similar, I mean it's so close. The same description, the same features. If you say its name, it appears. It's very similar, but those are two separate things. Um, I believe that the I'm I'm gonna just gonna say the R A K E is um, I believe the similar stories. Um, I know one of them does different things, but they're similar stories from two different portions of the world. Mm -hmm. not, not necessarily too spread out, but they're two different sections of the world. It's kind of how we each have our own urban legends. It's kind of the same thing, but in a different place. Um, yeah, which so, only validifies it even more since it's happening around the world. <laughs> yes, it is horrifying. Um, okay, so this is the crazy part. I'm going to read you... I'm not sure how much time we have left, but I'm going to read you maybe one or two of these short stories from real people. Okay. Okay, All right, get ready. I'm so oh, scared. I am I, literally terrified right now. <laughs> I, I am in high school in our, our English class again. Let's hope I'm not the kid that stutters when he reads aloud. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> this one is called... All right, oh, no, I can't tell you the name of it yet. You just got to hear. Okay. Oh, no. Ooh. Okay, so the story starts. So this happened about 12 years ago. My family owns a farm in the heart of an Indian reservation. One winter, I was home for Christmas, taking care of the farm while my parents were away Christmas shopping. As I was home by myself, way late in the night, I, all I could hear were the cows freaking out. I knew it had to be the wild dogs that rampage in that area. So I threw on some boots, grab a shotgun, load it up, and head out to the field. This was the perfect scenario for a horror movie. It was cloudy, but there was full moon outside, and it was breaking through the clouds just right to light up all the snow. I ran out in the middle of the field, and just in time, I see two dogs. They were standing up, facing each other, and fighting. I think, perfect. 
two for one. So I pump a shell into the chamber of Mr. 12 Gauge, and then <laughs> it happened. The two dogs heard the rack. And for those of you who don't know, that's when you go, ch -ch -ch, that, that's what the rack. Okay. They heard him cocking the shotgun, and the two dogs stopped. And they both looked, oh goodness, uh, they both looked over at me and ran away on their back legs. Uh uh, no. I immediately no. froze, and every ghost story about skinwalkers and all the other native legends I grew up with flew through my mind. Oh my goodness. So, picture two dogs in a field. You go to shoot at them because they're messing with your animals. And they stand up like people and run away. Both of them. In the night, they run away. <laughs> God. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing because that's literally so terrifying. But it's, the thought of just dogs, I, I just imagine like some Scooby Doo things. Like he's like, row, row. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's literally so terrifying. I, I had to look up. I'm literally looking up. I don't know how this is going to help, but I'm looking on Pinterest at puppies. Okay. Literally on my, on my thing, it says puppies funny. <laughs> okay. So Make sure that. They're not skinwalkers. No, these puppies look adorable and very unskin rock. Well, maybe that that dog kind of look a little. <laughs> he's looking a little deranged. Oh my god. <laughs> oh jeez. Okay, so I've got another. I've got a, a few more. These are like quick bursts, like very short stories from people. Um, all right. This one is titled "On the Res Alone at Night," and that meet that's short for reservation. Mm -hmm. Um, so here we go. It starts, my uncle and cousin saw a large deer on the side of the road. When they got closer to it, it hopped over the fence like a bipedal man. And that's the end of one of them. The other one says, one time driving back from Gallup, I believe it is, my dad saw an old Navajo woman walking on the side of the road. When he slowly offered her for a ride, she took off into the plains quickly with inhuman speed. Oh my that's another gosh. one. gosh. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, here's another one. Once when I was a kid, my fam my family was at my aunt's house, which is in a rural secluded area where we were toyed with by entities. They would make animal noises, and when we looked to the direction from which the noises came from, they would turn a flashlight on and off. The noises would come from all directions and increasingly increase shortly after success. I guess that's the success of them getting their attention. Yeah. Um, it says, usually when I'm there on the reservation, visiting alone, at night, I'll feel the presence of evil and dread, and I'll feel a panic and paranoia that I can't wash away. That's so... how I feel right now. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes. Okay. So, okay, this is the last one I'm going to read before I wrap it up. Um, it says, my uncle in, is Mexican and Native American. This happened in the Mojave Desert in Southern California. He was driving around with his girlfriend late at night, and they saw something that looked like a huge black dog on the side of the road. He slowed down, and the dog began crossing the road. Instead of walking like a normal dog would, this thing moved like a toy horse rocking. So I guess that- Oh my gosh, that's yes. terrifying. He said it stopped in the middle of the road and stared right at them. Its eyes had a red glow. Good lord. Can you imagine- can you imagine driving like in at night on a secluded road and that thing that like that is the, the oh man I literally crap myself right there <laughs> yes, same <laughs> a nasty I, one <laughs> okay so the last story that I'm going to talk about is one that actually a friend of ours has experienced Amanda did you know is it Timmy it is Timmy. I heard about this. Oh, okay. no. Okay. So for those of you out there, the audience. So we have a friend named Tim. If you're listening, hey, Tim, Timmy. hi. We love you. I love you so much, but mm, I want to kill friend. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have a friend named Tim. His home currently is, we live in the South. We live in, in the South. That is, a, that is a fact. And there's a lot of woods around here because there's a lot of farmland. And that means yeah. that it gets dark, dark. Um, dark. It gets dark. Like, it gets dark. So <laughs> Tim lives in an area where there's a lot of farmland, there's a lot of woods, and it gets really dark at night. And so one time he was driving, I don't know if he was driving home or if he was driving to work or whatnot, but he 
he was driving and he saw something. He saw something strange. And he proceeded to come to one of us and talk to us about it. And we caught wind and everybody began talking about it. And so I had no idea what he was talking about. I was one of the last people to actually get to hear about his little story. And I asked him not that long ago, um, well, not that long after he first started sharing it. And he told me the following. He said that he was driving on the road at night and he was driving by himself. He saw what appeared to be a dog or a coyote run across the road. And so it was already halfway across the road by the time he was driving up on it. And so at this point, I was very confused. I said, Tim, why would you be sharing something so ordinary like this? That's it's just a dog crossing the street. But then he said, no, Deontay. It was on its back legs. Uh, and I said, Timmy. <laughs> I said, what? And Timmy. Tim said, the th- he said, whatever it was, was standing up on its back legs and it ran across the street. Oh, and so can't. from that point forward, I was absolutely horrified. And so I had to know what these things were. And my ashy kneecaps are going to get me through it. Yes, apparently <laughs> they are. They are terrified of ash. That's one thing we got covered. We don't even have to. We have a built-in defense mechanism. I'm going to just blow on myself. I'm going to blow yes. on myself. And then <laughs> I, people go ask me why I'm ashy all the time now. I'm not going to put no baby oil on. No coconut oil on. No oh shea God. butter. I'm just going to be ashy. Dang. <laughs> that sounds kind of tough. They're going to look at me and be like. <gasps> and I'm oh going like, <laughs> like, oh to scare God. them before they scare me. Like I'm They're just... going to be able to hear you coming. It's going to sound like sandpaper when you move. Yeah, it's going to be like. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, well, my uh, goodness. Yeah, that that is Skinwalkers. Um. For future purposes, we were in the car with one of our friends in the dark area on a road in the backcountry on our way back from a trip. And we told her not to say it. Not going to say any names, but I'm sure you know who you are. Don't say the name. Just don't say it. Okay? It's not cool. It's not funny. It's going to come after you, and it's going to turn into your cat. <gasps> oh, you called her out. I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't I, know who I, it was until, until you said oh, cat. <laughs> oh. Oh, wait, no, wait. Oh, no, I think I called out the wrong person. I'm sorry. Oh, goodness. This podcast is not for... This is... Oh, no, we called out tea. Now we have tea podcast. We have drama podcast Dang. We're exposing people now. Oh, no. (laughs) Well, um, if they hadn't left earlier, they're for sure gone now. So that's... (laughs) That's great. (laughs) Okay. Um, yeah, no, that's all that I have today for Skinwalkers. Um... I decided to go all out. Um, For the first episode. Yeah, that's honestly pretty freaking terrifying. I look at a lot of scary things. I can't wait to not sleep until this podcast (laughs) is over and done with and never made another episode. Because I feel like I'm going to have a lot of sleepless nights after listening to this podcast over again. And I get the lovely chance to edit over this, too. (laughs) Oh, boy. Um, so I already have my next story picked out for the next time. I think you're gonna like it. It's, it, I just heard a sound in my house. What was that? Oh no, Deontay. Maybe he won't be the one that's gonna be hosting next week, y'all. Like, maybe. (laughs) If I come back and I'm like, hello, Amanda, let's get on with the podcast. That's how you you know you need to get out, burn my house, get my family. Yeah, no, I'm not even, yeah, I'm just gonna stay in. I'm going to stay in Boone real quick. <laughs> okay. Anyways, yeah, the next topic is going to be super cool. It's not necessarily as, well, no, it's not as brutal as this at all. It is very interesting, kind of conspiracy theory-esque. I think you'll like it a lot. Yeah. It's going to be fun. What a world we live in. <laughs> yeah. What a, oh, what a world, man. It's, oh, um, what a world. It's pretty crazy. Amanda, are you, you're hosting next episode, correct? Yes, and I have a very interesting topic. It's not going to be scary, but it'll be very existential, shall we say. I'm going to freaking lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be crazy. No, it's going to be very, very exciting. I'm very excited to talk about this one. But okay. um, thank you all for tuning in. I hope we were very comforting. 
I hope we treated you well as guests. But now it's oh, time man. for you to to get out. Oh, <laughs> this is us kicking you oh, out. Dude. Yeah, you guys gotta go. Sorry. Yeah. Turn your phone off. Leave leave Spotify. Uh, Apple Music. YouTube. Yeah. Sorry. Dang, we just yeah. Dang, we you gotta go. I mean, it's just, just just what happened. <laughs> Um, please tune in next week to hear our next podcast. It shall be very, very fun. Um, woo, 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 first episode. Um, we'll definitely get better at this as we go on. And if you really don't want to hear the next few, maybe check in enough, another few um, months and see how we're doing. Um, Heck yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of growing to do. So thank you for taking on this journey. And this is us signing off. Bye.